wouldn't it be great to hold serve as easily as all the pros that we see on TV? Absolutely, it would be. In this video, I'm gonna show you patterns with which you can start at the point on your terms. And of course, I'm gonna show you the drills that you can use to ingrain those patterns. Because to me, it's all about placement, placement over power, any day. And we'll start out with the first one, serve plus one. Serve plus one is a pattern you can use against almost any player. What you're doing is you're trying on the deuce court, if you're a right-hander, you're slicing the ball wide. You're stretching your opponent off the court and that leaves, bam, the ad side wide open. On the ad side, if you're able to hit a kick serve, that's a fantastic serve to pull your opponent out wide and of course then open up the deuce court big time. Yes, at the pros we're always talking about strike first strike tennis or whatever, and you see that a whole lot, that they serve and literally only need one ball more to win the point. Don't necessarily expect that you're outright winning the point. That means you pull them out wide, you get the ball that you need to go into the open court, and you're setting yourself up to stay aggressive. And at lower levels, if you're starting to move your opponent side to side, that forces an error a whole lot of times. Now at higher levels, it is absolutely common to serve into the strength to open up the weakness. So you do, if you're playing against a right-hander at a higher level, most likely they will favor their forehand. They can hit harder, they can produce more spin, but you're still going to their strengths to exploit the slightly weaker side. Or couple of details when you're working on those patterns. When you're serving to the deuce court, what you actually want to do is aim a little shorter. And if you do follow tennis at the pro level, the pros are taking a lot of pace off. So you will not see a 300 miles per hour serve short. You will see a lot more of a spinny serve slice and a slower serve. And that allows the players to really achieve angles that have the ball bounce in, cut the single sideline, cut the double sideline before it actually passes the baseline. And that is a really great serve. What do I do with the next ball? Well, I'm gonna hit it into the open court. Again, let's say I'm serving from the deuce court. I'm going wide. Hopefully my opponent is somewhere in the fence over there. And I get a ball that sits anywhere to the right from those cones. If I am a more advanced player, you're probably gonna start looking for your forehand there. However, here's a caveat to that. You don't necessarily have to force yourself to hit a forehand because it's an inside out forehand. You have to move fairly quickly to get around the ball and make space for that ball. So if you're a little newer to tennis and you're not quite into that, oh, I'm looking for my forehand pattern yet, then this is perfectly fine. Just use your backhand because it's a cross court ball and that's a lot easier to use to change the direction than a ball that comes across your body. Now, if you followed me for a while, you know that I love weird names for drills or for plays. And the next one fits right in with everything that I'm doing. It is the ankle breaker. And I'm stealing that shamelessly from the singles playbook by Fuzzy Yellow Balls. And what this playbook is, it gives you the moves to literally play against any type of player and know what you can and should not do. So the ankle breaker is something that you could do, for instance, against somebody who doesn't change direction very well, who's not moving as well. And it's just one of the many, many plays that you have in the playbook. I'm gonna drop the link down below in the description. And what you can do is you can just look at the illustrations or even better, hover over the QR cord with your iPad or with your phone and boom, up pops Will Hamilton to explain exactly what that play is. So it's the singles playbook, link is down in the description. Now let's break some ankles. Sounds a little crass, but it is a great play when you have an opponent who is not very good at changing direction. So for instance, on clay, that's a really good play because yeah you go right back behind them again we're starting out with a wide serve so you're again stretching your opponent off the court but instead of going into the open court you're going behind them you can also for instance use that if somebody has a blatantly weaker side so let's say my opponent has a weaker backhand side 
I'm going to serve out wide if it's a right-hander. And instead of going to the deuce court, I'm going back behind them. Or I run that play on the deuce court against the left-hander because I'm twice going to their backhand and I force them to change direction. So let's look at how it's working. Even if you make mistakes with those plays, it's a really good idea to ingrain those patterns because yeah, number one, they work. And number two, you feel in charge. And that was one of the biggest things that I liked when I played. I get to dictate win or lose. It's me. Hi, it's me. I'm the problem, it's me. Sorry, Taylor. Oh, great, great. Now we covered the theory of it all. How do I work on that? A lot of people think those kind of patterns you can only work on if you have a partner or if you have a coach. And uh, I'm going with no. You can start by just serving, just placing the serve, and then shadow a stroke. Might look funny for people that are looking at you from the outside, but it helps. It ingrains the pattern. So this next drill, you can do with a partner and it doesn't have to be a coach. Almost anyone can toss a ball like that, right? So your serve goes wide, you're opening the court yeah. and I'll give you that ball. And of course, this is not realistic to a match, right? Yeah, yeah. But you're ingraining the process, yeah. right? You're ingraining the pattern. But getting repetitions, there we go. So that your brain basically recognizes that in a match. Ooh, I have a short ball, I pulled them out wide, I'm attacking, go in the open court. Okay, get around it. There we go. All right, the next one is, you can have somebody just feed the return. If you're a really good server and you're just not getting enough returns when somebody's trying to return the ball, just ask them to feed the ball back. Ingrain the patterns. And you're doing that even if the ball is out. Even if the serve is out, my partner, my student, client, whatever, they can still work on their second ball. There we go. Okay, and then lastly, we'll do it live. There we go, perfect. And you saw my return is nowhere near enough to push him and he's just simply going into the open court. So that's really great execution. Remember, pace is not the most important thing because if you hit the ball fast and you hit it right into their strike zone, well, the ball's gonna be at your side way quicker than you're ready to execute any play. If you have trouble with your kick serve and you want a reminder how to execute it, check out this video here because the kick is fantastic to pull somebody out wide on the ad court. Lefty or righty, doesn't matter, pull them out.